Today on General Hospital, Spencer is left a mysterious key. Laura believes Victor has left a clue to Nicholas' whereabouts, and Joss asks Michael to give the evidence on Sunny to Carly to use against him. Alexis walks into her office and finds Gregory trying to calm Esme down, who thinks she's going to get fired on her first day. Alexis says she just got a million texts and doesn't know what is going on. Gregory explains Esme accidentally forwarded a private email from a source to a global list. Flabbergasted, Alexis says, You exposed a source, allowing us to potentially be scooped. She asks Gregory how bad it is. Gregory says he was called in when she couldn't be reached and handled it. Alexis tells Esma she needs to know she can trust her with sensitive information, but seeing as this is her first day and she's still learning, she will give her another chance. She orders Esma to clock out and Esma rushes out. Alexis thinks she should probably call a temp agency. Alexis asks Gregory to fill her in, and he says fortunately this source was using an anonymous email, and he mitigated the damage done. She thanks him for coming in to handle it, especially since he's been ghosting her. He apologizes for that and admits he considered reaching out, but he worried he dumped this burden on her, and that he may have scared her off. Alexis explains she was trying to respect his boundaries, but her daughter convinced her to reach out to him. He says her text made him realize he can't do this alone and needs a friend. Alexis just wants to be there for him as he goes through this, and he accepts that Alexis does wonder if he was afraid to take the job she offered because people might find out he was sick. He admits that was part of it, but also that he didn't know if he was up to the job. Alexis thinks he just proved himself more than capable. Gregory asks if the position is still open, and she says she never got around to filling it. At Laura's, Spencer wonders what is in the small, light box Victor left him. Laura tells him after all they've been through, he doesn't need to open it. Anna finally arrives and Spencer says he'll open the box later and says they should continue. The reading of the will resumes playing, and Victor gets to his other nephew, Nicholas. He recalls Nicholas came to his aid when he needed him, and they helped one another build new lives when everyone thought they were dead. However, he knows times have gotten difficult, and Nicholas will need a home. He trusts Spencer will take care of his gift to him until Nicholas returns. The lawyer hands Spencer an envelope. To his most formidable opponent, someone who knows how the WSB works and secrets play out, Victor leaves Anna with the truth. She says that's it, he wanted to taunt her one last time. Finally, Victor gets to Laura, who he leaves the ability to live the rest of her life in peace, and says she has his respect and admiration for being a worthy opponent. The lawyer says that concludes the will and departs. Spencer opens the envelope but the paper inside is in Russian. Laura thinks Anna can speak Russian. Anna, who seems lost in thought, says she can a little and looks it over. It's a deed to a property, and there is an address on it. Anna continues to appear troubled, and Ava asks what this truth she's inherited is about. Anna says it's a mind game, Victor's way to make her obsess over something. Anna heads out, and Laura wonders why Victor would leave Nicola's a property. Spencer looked up the address, and it is in Chechnya. Just then Esme returns home, and she sees Ace's blanket on a table. She can't believe they put Ace down without his favorite blanket and storms off with it. Laura ponders that they know Victor gave Nicholas shelter when he faked his death, and now she wonders if this place is where Nicholas has gone to hide. Ava notes if Nicholas was hiding there that Victor wouldn't just reveal it. Esme returns and Laura tells Esme it's possible Nicholas is holed up in some remote part of Chechnya. Ava says they have no proof, but Laura thinks it's the best lead they have. Ava advises her not to go on a wild goose chase which could be dangerous, and she fears she's setting herself up to be disappointed. Laura can't just sit around here wondering, she has to take this chance. In his room, Spencer opens the box, and inside are the two turtle doves he was going to give to Trina at Christmas. He realizes Victor saved them. Under the doves and cotton lining he finds a small key. At Crimson, Nana talks to Sunny on the phone. He thinks she should be here at the hospital with her daughter. Nina tells him not to worry, that she plans to fight to be with the ones she loves. At Portia and Curtis' place, Stella learns about the DNA test, and Marshall tells Curtis to go be with Trina. Curtis can't believe he's about to find out if he's a father. Stella offers to go with him, along with Marshall, but Curtis will be fine, 
It should be just him and Portia. Portia doesn't think Trina wants her there, but Curtis insists Trina will look back and be glad she was there. Marshall serves up some gumbo to Stella, but she can't think about eating. She fears Curtis wants nothing to do with her, and she can't believe she ran away after the wedding when he needed her most. He says she came back, but Stella is afraid she has lost Curtis forever. Marshall says if Curtis could forgive him for abandoning his family, he can forgive her. Marshall says they are family, and they will always be there for one another. At the hospital, Joss begs her mom to take the deal from the feds because she doesn't belong in prison, but Sonny does. Carly knows Sonny hurt them, but they forgive and move on, and she won't let someone else pay for her mistakes. Sonny interrupts and says he needs to go meet with Nina, and after he leaves, Joss points out Sonny just chose Nina over the family again. Joss cries to her mother if she goes to jail then Sonny gets full custody of Donna along with Mina. Michael tells Joss that's enough, and that this is their mother's choice. Joss vents that Michael knows a bit about making choices that get other people hurt. Carly asks what this is about. Carly gets a call from Pilar and excuses herself, but wants this settled by the time she gets back. Michael and Joss bicker, and Michael feels their mother has enough on her plate right now to heap this on her. Joss suggests maybe it's a good thing he didn't turn Sonny in, because now their mom can save herself and Drew using the recording that he had Dex make. She tells him to give the video to their mom and tell her to take it to the feds. Carly returns with TJ, who says Willow's transplant is complete. Willow will have to remain in the hospital as the bone marrow grafts to her and starts building healthy new cells, and in time she can go home. TJ explains it'll have to keep monitoring Willow, and sometimes the host rejects the grafted cells. However, they are optimistic she'll make a full recovery. Michael asks if he can see Willow, and TJ says he can. Carly is sure Willow will be okay and tells Michael and Joss whatever is going on between them to end it. Joss says they will do what's best for the family, write Michael elsewhere. Marcus arrives to be with Trina, who is waiting for the DNA results. She thanks him for getting here so fast. He asks how she's feeling, and she admits she's all over the place, and she's worried about the future and what will change. Marcus promises her nothing will change, but Trina says the results could change everything. Trina says if Curtis is her father, she'll have missed out on 20 years of getting to know him. She is afraid the closer she gets to Curtis and his relatives, the more she'll hurt Marcus. Marcus tells her that she'll always be a part of his life, and he'll always be a part of hers. If she ends up being part of another family, he tells her it doesn't mean she's not a part of his Portia and Curtis arrive and find Marcus comforting Trina. They approach them and Trina is handed the results by a nurse. She says it's now or never. Trina opens them and says they reveal Curtis is her biological father. Marcus tells Trina it's okay and she cries in his arms. Trina says she wanted to know the truth, and she does. She says she cares about Curtis, and they'll have to figure out wherever their relationship goes moving forward. However, she's not looking for a replacement father and hopes she can accept that. Curtis says he understands and would never try and take her father's place. He says he'll follow her lead. Marcus notes she could do worse than having two dads, especially one as good as Curtis. Marcus leaves them to work this out. He walks off holding back tears and looks defeated. He boards the elevator, and once the door is close, he breaks down and begins punching the walls. Sunny arrives at the metro court to see Nina, who has thoughts on their wedding. She knows grooms don't normally care about wedding planning. He cares about spending his life with her. She would like to schedule it for when Willow is recovered, should she choose to attend. Anna enters and Sunny and Mana approach her. Nina throws her arms around her and thanks her for saving her aunt, who helped save her daughter. As they talk, the WSB agent who gave Robert trouble arrives and tells Anna that she's under arrest. Anna demands to know why she's being arrested. The agent tells her it's best they discuss this somewhere more secure, and she can come voluntarily or the hard way. Anna says she'll go with him and looks forward to finding out whatever the truth is. He cuffs her and escorts her out. On the next general hospital, Dex isn't sure Joss' plan will work. In the metro court pool, Trina tells Spencer she wonders if she should have ever asked the question. TJ tells his mom that he messed up. Portia asks Curtis what made him decide to stay. Stella tells someone it's time they clear the air. Valentin confronts Laura about having something that belongs to him. Anna screams, I'm taking the WSB down with me.